The fragmentation of the continents would mean an unprecedented revolution in the history of life on Earth. Approximately 200 million years ago, the southern supercontinent broke apart, creating Australia, the Antarctic, Africa, Asia, and South America. 80 million years later, Madagascar and India separated from Africa, then drifted for another 45 million years before finally reaching their present positions. And on this strange, wandering island, evolution seemed to come to a standstill. The mammals were still a primitive prototype in the jungles of this new Lemuria. Like a good daughter of Gondwana, the island of Madagascar was a territory dominated by the reptiles and amphibians, where plants and invertebrates formed the basis of the food chain. Arthropods, like this giant millipede, have inhabited Madagascar since its formation as an island. Its ancestors were ready to be found in the jungles of the distant Gondwana, and since then they have made it possible for the silent hunters of the forest to live. A person's chameleon, the largest chameleon in the world. There are two males on the same branch, and inevitably they are fighting. Like two caricatures of the colossal dinosaurs that dominated the Jurassic world, each chameleon uses its nasal appendage to try to throw its rival off the branch. These are two descendants of those reptiles torn from the continent of Africa when Madagascar became independent, and perhaps the most representative, because the chameleons have diversified here more than any other place in the world. Today, over half of all existing species of chameleons live on and are endemic to the island, and they have become the most numerous reptiles in Madagascar. Fights between these two giants are spectacular, but don't generally have serious consequences. All the violence is concentrated on the protuberances at the end of their heads. By pushing and occasionally biting, the rivals try to push each other off the branch. They do not have powerful teeth, and the nails are not designed for combat or hunting, so the only consequences will be a few bruises and one chameleon whose pride has been wounded. All the life forms that remained on the island were left behind as evolution hurtled on. Time stood still here, and among the creatures of the isolated Lemuria, evolution was marked by the ecological changes of the environment in which the species lived. But in the rest of the world, wherever the continental masses remained communicated, natural selection was imposing brutal evolutionary laws as a result of direct competition among increasingly well-prepared species. When India separated from Madagascar and crashed into Asia approximately 80 million years ago, the mammals were beginning their impressive diversification. Major geological and climatic changes produced new environments, new ecosystems whose resources were available for those beings capable of adapting to the new circumstances.
New mountain ranges broke the winds and altered the rainfall patterns. Entire continental masses changed the currents, altering the climate of the whole planet. Deserts and marshes appeared, plains were flooded, and new jungles arose. Animals and plants had to adapt or die. And in this changing world, a group of mammals began to emerge supreme due to its capacity to adapt and diversify. The primates. The modern primates are descendants of those first mammals, those tiny insectivores that hid in the jungles of Gondwana. Today they have colonized all the continents, and the most adaptable species of all, man, has conquered the entire planet. In South America, still separated from the lands to the north, the primates were isolated and produced the so-called New World monkeys, such as the howlers and these capuchin monkeys. But in Africa and Asia, a group which scientists have called Old World Monkeys culminated in the appearance of man and the large modern pongids, the chimpanzees, the African gorillas, and the agile orangutans of Southeast Asia. The large simians, up to then the most intelligent animals in creation, had developed from ancestral primates, subjected to constant processes of natural selection in permanent competition with other species. But at a time when mammals had not even begun to develop their incredible capacity for generating new species, Madagascar had separated from Africa and had remained isolated in the Indian Ocean. How then can we explain the existence there of the enigmatic prosimians, which we now call lemurs? A broad-billed roller stands watchful guard in the Analamazotra jungle in the east of Madagascar. For the birds, it was easy to fly to the island crossing over the Mozambique Channel, but when they arrived, they found Madagascar already had other inhabitants. And some of their descendants are those this roller is observing. Today, there are almost 85 species of snake in Madagascar. When the island formed among the snakes that remained here, there was not a single poisonous one, and their descendants to this day remain loyal to their origins. But what worries the roller, which has just completed its nest, is not the poison. Almost all Madagascan snakes like eggs, and some have developed into skillful climbers. This Ithisifus, which the locals call the Fandre Fiala, is one of the most agile tree-climbing snakes in the jungles of Madagascar. Despite the thorny bark that surrounds the nest of the roller, the snake climbs up, testing the air with its forked tongue. But what the Ithisifus does not know is that the mother is watching his every move. And it is one thing to steal the eggs from a nest, quite another to challenge a broad bill determined to defend her offspring. When Madagascar became an island, the animals in its interior adapted to the conditions of its different ecosystems in order to avoid falling prey to the enemies that shared their isolation. And one of the most effective adaptations of all was camouflage.
The constant vigilance of the roller detects a small gecko. These inoffensive reptiles are one of the groups that chose camouflage, but in the jungles of Madagascar, you need to be constantly on the alert because your enemies, too, may have learned to hide. Looking just like a branch moved by the wind, this lance-nosed snake knows how to wait patiently, trusting in its extraordinary disguise. Among the dense vegetation, death slowly approaches its prey, advancing slightly, then freezing, again turning into a branch, while the roller, knowing her eggs are safe, is a silent witness to the drama unfolding below. The gecko feels safe among the leaves and without realizing stands right in the jaws of its mortal enemy. And in the isolated world of Lemuria, there are no second chances. The snow snake is not poisonous and so cannot rapidly kill its prey and has to attempt to choke it or swallow it alive. Little by little the hunter moves the head of its prey into a position which makes it possible to begin swallowing it. The gecko fights with the last strength of desperation because once its head is inside the snake, it'll be impossible for it to breathe and it'll die. A futile struggle. The lance-nosed snake now holds it firm and is an expert hunter. It knows time is on its side and again it waits. Now its prey cannot breathe and realizes its strength is running out. Before it has been swallowed entirely, the little gecko will already have died. <laughs> 